Hello! So, this is the third video in our series of making the lights out game. Here's where we were before. We have a main method that makes a game, randomizes it, and then shows it to the user with a print statement. And then we ask the user repeatedly what X and Y point they want to toggle. We toggle it, and then we print out the changed game where there's, there's three things that we still need to fix. One, we loop infinitely. We just go while true. We never actually end the game. Two, somebody can type in an invalid square, and that square would be out of bounds. And number three, somebody could type in a square on the edge, and because of the way we wrote the toggle method, we could accidentally go over the bounds. There's four different directions we go. We go north, uh, south, you know, we go east, west, north, and south from the x, y coordinate we were given. And we could fix that up in a different way. <clears throat> we're going to use if statements right now to catch those because those are things that we could handle sort of locally. We know about boundary conditions, and we can say, well, if x is less than grid.length minus 1, then we know that this is going to be valid. <clears throat> we can actually say x plus 1 and not go off the boundaries to the right. Now we can do the same exact thing down here for y. If y is less than grid, length minus one. <clears throat> Oops. Then we're going to be able to catch that boundary condition as well. <clears throat> the last edge cases here are if you are too small and we're going to say x is greater than zero. And then it is just fine to subtract one from it. Same thing down here if y is greater than zero, <clears throat> then we can safely subtract off one from y, and we're still within bounds. So let's see if we can run this game and fix those boundary conditions. Compile it up here. We'll make the screen bigger. There we go. Okay, here's our 5x5 five five board. <clears throat> let's make sure something in the middle works. That looks good. Let's change boundary condition up here. Zero, zero. Hey, we don't crash anymore. Zero, four, 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 <clears throat> four, zero. All of the boundary conditions seem to be working. Good. And we have to terminate it because we have an infinite loop here. The second thing we want to fix <coughs> is going to be the problems in lights out related to this position. If somebody types an invalid x and y, <clears throat> then it has an array index at a bounds exception. Let's actually just watch that work a little bit. Somebody says, I have a 5x5 five five grid. I want to change position 6, 8. Exception. Array index out of bounds exception. So. We can't really come up with a local fix to say, oh, I can still toggle things. I could just ignore it. Like I'm ignoring the edges, but it makes toggle not really do anything. And it feels weird to not tell the user that that is something wrong that they did. So the exception gets thrown <clears throat> by the toggle method. And the toggle method can say, wait, out here, this is a risky line. <coughs> This one is something we should be worried about. Java lets us do a try and say, well, this might be risky, but give it a shot. If something goes wrong, we can catch it. An array index out of bounds exception. Hey, oob. Well, I could do something with this. is just an object in Java. All I'm going to do right here is tell the user they did something wrong out of bounds. <clears throat> Try again. And now if I run it, I 
I should be able to type in things that are valid still. <clears throat> but if I type in 6, 7, out of bounds, try again. It spits back the exact same screen, which is nice, but I get an error message that something went wrong. Okay. <clears throat> there is one other type of error we did not catch. But now that we're doing try catches, let's fix that too. What if they typed in the letter, the numbers <clears throat> as actual words? Oh no, we have a different exception. And this exception came from the scanner and it's called an input mismatch exception. Well, let's do the same sort of thing. Let's try to give them another chance. So I want to wrap all of this code up in a try block. Try this out and catch that crazy input mismatch exception. I am E. And when that happens, you're going to say, oh, please type integer. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Always test the things that do work. Two, two, zero, four, seven, eight, out of bounds. Five, please type integers. Don't oh, know, but we have an infinite loop. <clears throat> this, this we can fix though. I can stop it right over here. And this happens because of how buffers work with the scanner. When you ask for an integer of the scanner, it goes to the buffer. And only when it hits a carriage return does it go and get a new buffer of stuff. Well, <clears throat> we never cleared the buffer. And so we can do that really easily here by saying next. If something strange happens, they didn't type an integer. I can't find one in my buffer. I have to clear the buffer. So, five, ah, we cleared the buffer. No more infinite loop. Great, this is wonderful. Okay, last thing to fix, while true. It would be good if we knew when the game was solved. What I'm gonna do is copy my function for randomize because it follows the same structure. What I'm gonna call it is solved. I'm going to change it to be a boolean and I'm going to say if grid at spot ij if there is something true, if there's a light on, well then the game is not solved and I'm going to return false. <clears throat> but if I make it through both stages of for loops and I never saw a light on, now I am safe to return true. Okay, so while it's not the case that the game is solved, we have to give the user another chance. Okay, so this is hard to test because of the way the game works, if you actually just make random selections for each individual light, you're not guaranteed to be connected. There's a lot of graph theory behind this in terms of mathematics. Sometimes it might work. Uh, let's try two, four, turn that off over there. Uh, we're gonna turn off zero, two, zero, zero, one, zero, ah, we seem to have a really strange situation here, two, zero. I might have created one that is unsolvable. I might not be able to solve the puzzle, but we have a puzzle creator that we can work with and there are better ways to do it. Maybe in a future video, I will do talk about better ways to do this. And in future videos, I'll be upgrading this with enums that we're learning about now and eventually we'll learn how to do this with a GUI, an actual 2D interface that I can click on squares instead of going through the X, Y, and the scanner and the text. This same model, the same lights out glass will be useful 
in multiple different ways. So we'll get to that.